Hello, I'm Captain Spatula. You may know me from such series as Elite Dangus, or that one filthy Python video that Yamix did with more masturbation-themed humor than you could shake a fist at. Pun intended. Yes, and recently my little space diary got followed by over 2,000 creepy perverts interested in hearing about my space investigations. And if you've been around the galaxy, you know there's no lack of content out there. You might uh, get your news from an ant made of volcanic glass or a pit of spiky plant balls, or a kickboxing dictator who scores more first scoops than a Dairy Queen. Or maybe you go to the Latvian pulp pit when you need someone to tell it like it is, or you get lost in the many homoerotic space adventures of that uh, guy everyone blames. Anyway, the point is, there's uh, good content out there for elite pilots to watch on the way to Hutton Orbital, with enough different strokes to entertain all kinds of folks. But I felt like something was missing. Who out there is covering the news that no one dares cover? Who dares to dream? A dream for all those dreamers who stopped dreaming when the grand space grind ground them down. Where's the spectacular spectacle of speculation and unfounded rumors? Whatever happened to fake news? Who will stand at the podium of lies and speak those terrible space truths that everyone else is thinking? Well, it isn't much different from my delusional detective work. And so I present to you, dear elites, a new little dangus, focusing on pure speculation, rumors, and most important of all, completely fabricated conspiracy theories made up by yours truly. So welcome everyone to Spatula's Crackpot. Today we'll start the show off with the hot topic of the moment. Yes, I mean those gigantic plus-sized money-sucking fleet carriers that everyone's ex-wife now looks like a good investment in comparison to. Right out of the gates, fleet carriers created a massive wave of negative reactions and many conspiracy theories as well. Let's take a look at a few. Who are fleet carriers made for? Now this is one question I've seen a lot. You would think this would be an easy question to answer. Squadrons, admirals, commanders, and everyone but explorers maybe. Well that's what the officials want you to think. But the reality is much darker than this. My sources tell me that fleet carriers were designed for one specific purpose to replace the Raxla mythology with an existential credit treadmill. Instead of a galactic economy fueled by the desire to discover something new out there in the black, the designers would rather have us chained to our big hunky tools out in the asteroid belts mining for rocks. Why? Because you can't spend arcs on Raxla kits. So who were carriers designed for? Well, there's only one possibility. Bigfoot. The damn bastard is at it again. Now what's up with upkeep. Another question I see many asking is why you'd even design carriers to spread debt around the galaxy at all? Well here's the catch-22. You see, if you don't put any upkeep, then eventually everyone will have their own fleet carrier and be able to go anywhere, do anything. They'd be able to have fun doing what they want and the galaxy would be filled with happy people cruising in their fleets, making money. But if you add a few simple billion dollars a month to the equation, all of a sudden, those fleet carriers will cluster at low-temperature diamond spots in desperate attempts to fill their coffers and keep the spice flowing. Now, you need some balance, but upkeep could have related to gameplay like optional NPC security protection or insurance, marketing, long-range scanning, drone resupplies, or combat carrier gameplay and repair costs. But if you really read between the lines here, the developers are actually making a powerful statement about classism and social issues with their implementation of this balance. In this metaphor, the elite are just chained to an unending grind, forced into upkeep servitude. Their endgame status symbol takes the bougiest of bouges and traps them within a prison of their own success. Those who relent to the middle class will fly maintenance-free anacondas, while those who buy carriers to enter high society will pay the price of an eternal grind, even if just reduced to a token. It really has nothing to do with any real upkeep. It's just there to make sure that only those who will commit to wealth also commit to their own slavery. For all we know, the carrier just tosses your credits into the sun. But what it's really telling us is that capitalism is a flawed system. Now, the other more deeper concern about upkeep is that they've just agreed to lower the cost by a huge amount, proving that the upkeep was arbitrarily high number in the first place, and also proving that most rich people are super cheap. But the whispers of the galaxy tell me something else. They ask the question, did they really think the price was right? Or did they know it was ridiculous high and put it out there anyway, knowing they could easily bring it down for a manageable win? Was it all so they could release another half-baked potato on the galaxy and move on to a shiny new era? I can't imagine that individuals were at fault. 
Something's just not right here, and it's pretty clear to this kitchen utensil what's going on. The Illuminati themselves have infiltrated the developers, and likely steered the development of carriers in order to get an iron grip on the richest bank accounts in the galaxy, funneling money from their carriers back into their own dark projects, steered towards the financial galactic domination. See, so you can thank the Illuminati for upkeep is what I'm saying, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Dark Wheel had their sticky fingers in this as well. And why was there no universal cartographics on carriers? Well, this is being reversed, but it's an interesting question. I've heard rumblings that it might have had something to do with transferring large packets of encrypted data over fuzzy witch space radios, but this was a lie, stuffed down our throats by the establishment to cover up what's really going on. You see, Universal Cartographics is a company that makes scanners and buys data. Well, guess how they push their scanners out there? An exclusive contract with the Pilots Federation. You can only buy their goods and only sell the data back to them. It's a monopoly on money laundering. Let me explain it another way. Have you ever heard that we've only explored about 1% of the galaxy and thought, hey, gee, that number sounds low when you think about all those distant world nut jobs out there? Well, it is. And think about it. When was the last time you went into the black and saw a bunch of unexplored systems only to find SRV corpses every square kilometer on the local moon? The Universal Cartographic System is the longest running scam in the galaxy. You sell them data, they pay out money that's been laundered from the criminal underground. And then they wipe the data so they can sell it all over again to the next sucker. Now, I'm not sure how this operation actually benefits them, considering they're just paying people. But I'll continue my investigations to find out. Now, if they give the ability for players to log the real-time data on their carriers, it might expose the whole scam. And exploration data laundering is a racket you don't want to be competing with. Fortunately, due to the demands of the masses, they are looking at implementing universal cartographics on carriers, but only in a way that they can rig the system that won't expose the whole racket. Anyway, those are just some of the things I've been hearing about fleet carriers. All I know is that this commander can't afford one in the first place, so you won't see this cat running around with that bunk of hunk of junk. Blech. Anyway, I've given you the information. What you do with it is up to you. Watch the block and fly dangus commanders. Spatula out.